Well, hello guys, welcome to episode 18 of John's Workshop. I think I've got it right this time. I think I incorrectly called the last one 16 and it was 17. So uh, this is 18. I can't believe we're on 18 already um, in such a few, uh, few short weeks. So um, you join me at the bench. I'm just cleaning up the, the, the bits and pieces that I showed in the last video really of the, the mill strip down. And there's a couple of sort of bits that I've been doing that, that somebody might find useful and I've, I've done it off camera so apologies for that because um, the camera's been indoors charging after yesterday so um, but what what I've done is the, I've attacked the Gibbs strip the one that I showed yesterday that had got the uh, horrendous scraping marks on it um, so I've attacked that and I've attacked it in a sort of a little bit of an unconventional way really compared to how a lot of videos on YouTube would show this you know, unfortunately, I've not been on the uh, on the Stefan Gotters winter um, scraping course. <laughs> I don't have the kit around me to do that, if I'm honest, at the moment. So I, I don't have any blue um, engineers blue or anything like that. So, but what I have got is a surface plate and a and a clock stand. And there's a there's another way you can attack things like this, which is what I've done, and I'll show you that. So. Um, there's a couple of bits. I'll just grab the, the Gibbs strip now. It was in a pretty horrendous state, to be honest with you. Um, so it's now been draw filed. So that's the face that, that had the awful scraping marks um, on it. And you can see there's still some remnants of the, of the marks. Now, I don't intend to take all of those out. There's no need. Um, in fact, they'll, they'll be beneficial because they'll they'll hold oil um, against the slide wave so I'm not too fussed with that. What's more important is it's burr free now, it's flat and it's straight um, and I'll show you how I've done that without engineer's blue. It's all been done by draw filing so I've done that side. The other side that was really really coarsely ground and I mean really coarsely ground it, it had it's almost like the grinding wheel had just bounced its way along the surface so that it was it was an, a real undulating surface so that that's now flat as well so I'll just take you to the bench and show you how I've how I've done that and how I've achieved it because it's a it's probably a way that not many people have seen and I, I certainly haven't seen anyone else on YouTube doing it so and that, that might just be that I've not uh, not had the chance to look but uh, so I'll just show you at the bench now what I've done so this is um, this is quite a simple way of, of doing this um, if, you, if you don't have scraping equipment or you don't have the skills for scraping or you don't have engineers blue but you do have a surface plate which is what I've got so what I've been doing basically is putting the each side of the of the Gibbs strip I've attacked one, each side on its own um, I, I'm taking it I'm taking a lot of stuff into sort of assumptions here so I'm assuming that the taper is constant <laughs> that's a big assumption based on the state of it but um, I'm assuming the taper is constant um, I'm draw filing these surfaces so I know across the surface from this side to this side it's flat because it's been draw filed and I'm checking that out as well on the table but from end to end that's the most important bit obviously that's where uh, and when I first put this on the surface plate there was I think about 25, 30 thou of uh, out of flatness on both sides of this so it wasn't particularly good so what I've been doing is basically draw filing it to clean the original surface up and I've been doing that very simply the problem with this with a Gibbs strip like this is there's not a parallel surface on it everything's wedged, shaped, tapered so you, you cannot put this in a vise really and, and do anything with it so you need to be working on a, on a flat on a flat bench and the easiest way to do that is just push it up against something that's not going to move and in this case I've just been using this, the base of this vise basically laid on the bench nice and flat up against the vise and just draw filing and you keep your pressure on the forward stroke and you release the pressure on the back stroke so that the thing's not sliding backwards and forwards on the bench it's quite simple quite easy to do and then it's just been a series of file a bit, stick it on the surface plate, check it, and this is how I've been checking it. So let's take it, it was this surface I've done, basically onto the surface plate, just make sure that's clean. This is cast iron as well, so it's, uh, 
you know, it's black, everything's black when you start using this stuff. And basically, setting the, the clock stand to a zero point, and then rocking the gear backwards and forwards. And if there's any bow in this, you'll see it on the clock. And that will give you your total extent of bow. If you look at, if you set it at one end and set it at the other end and check both ends, take the mean, and that will show you what the bow is that you've got. What it doesn't show you is if you've got, it will show you if you've got a, a concave bow, I guess. It won't show you if you've got a convex bow. Um, and the only way to check that is to try and put some very thin feeler gauges underneath uh, uh, underneath the, the flat surface onto the table, which I've been doing as well. So basically, I've been rocking it backwards and forwards. And when you see the, 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 the needle moving, basically if you keep pressing along the length of the thing, at a point you'll see the movement stop. And that is the high point. So you mark that point, take it off, back onto the bench, a bit more draw filing, clean it back up, put it back on, recheck, and it's a very iterative process backwards and forwards. So I've got that now to within, I've got about five tenths of a thou flatness on there now, and, and I'm really happy with that. I've got a, the thinnest feeler gauge I've got is a thou feeler, and I've been up the length of it, and I can't get a thou feeler, so I'm fairly happy that this is flat within half a thou, which is not perfect, and, and I could certainly get it better than that by bluing and all the rest of it, but half a thou, based on the quality of the rest of the mill, I think that's going to be perfectly good enough. I don't think there's going to be any, you know, I could make this to, to, to two tenths of a thou or even a tenth of a thou with a lot more effort, but if that's bearing on surfaces that are machined to four or five thou accuracy, it's, it's, you kind of, it's a lot of effort for, net, for very little return at that point. So I've been doing that both sides, checking this side and this side, checking the bow, checking the flatness, um, and I'm happy that I've done the y-axis one now. So that's um, that's ready to go back into the machine when I rebuild it. I need to do the same with the x-axis. What I'll do with that is I'll try and film some of that. It's going to be a bit more difficult because the x-axis give is longer than my surface plate, so that's going to be a little bit more challenging, but we'll, I'm sure 300 millimeters is enough of a flat surface for me to get an idea of what, how flat it is. Um, another task I've been doing, and, and I, can, whoops, I can pretty much guarantee I'm the only person in the world today who's using a uh, Woolworths Workshop uh, Dremel uh, copy. Um, I bet there's not many of these left. Um, what I've got in there is it's just a nylon brush and it came out of the Lidl's set of points and burrs and stuff. It's really good. I, it might have a very, very slight amount of abrasive in it, but it's so soft that it's, it, it's, it's negligible if there is any abrasive in there. And what I've been doing is the, the actual um, the feed nut itself. Um, I've been going down using this, using the brush, into the threads, taking all of the, you know, all the rubbish out of the inside of the thread. So that's now nice and clean. So that's the y-axis one ready to reload. Um, I just need to give that a coat of oil now, just so that it doesn't rust. Um, but that's that's ready to go back in. So I'll do the same with the x-axis stuff, and I'll try and film some of that as I go, just so that you can see probably more so the the draw filing work and the assessment, because I think it, it's not a very common way. And certainly I've not seen lots of people doing that kind of thing. Typically you'll see people putting blue engineers blue everywhere and scraping stuff in, which is the right way to do it, to be fair. This is a bit of a cowboy way. It's not quite as um, accurate, but certainly I think accurate enough um, compared to the rest of the mill that I'm building. So I'll bring you back at some point later when I'm, uh, when I'm working on the x-axis stuff. Well, we're back guys. I've um I've done the x-axis lead screw now. I didn't film any of that because it is just cleaning up. Um, so it's had a good wire brush, very gentle wire brush all round the threads, end to end. Um, it's been cleaned then with a, a nylon brush or a paint brush, um, but, you know, just to get rid of all the muck that the wire brush had loosened up. Then it's had a rag over it. Um, any remaining bits taken out and then it's had a, a, a good oil up and I've given it a bit of an inspection 
um, and it, it, again it's slightly the one it doesn't look too bad. Um, I got a question from one of my viewers on the video that I uploaded, um, on the last video I uploaded which was episode uh, 17 um, and he said, and, and this is a function of my camera being poor rather than your eyesight I think and apologies I've forgotten, I've forgotten your name. I will respond in the comments though, but th these are Acme threads, um, so um, he couldn't quite determine whether they were Acme or just standard um, buttress threads, but, um, but yeah, they're, they're definitely Acme threads. Um, so anyway, that's that one done. Um, what I'm going to do now is just show you the gib strip for the x-axis, <laughs> just, uh, just for giggles. Uh, I'll just go and get that. So it's, it's exactly the same as the y-axis one, um, one side is coarsely ground, it's not as bad as the y-axis one, this one, it's more of a finer, uh, more of a finer grind on this one, um, so it's not as bad. If you have a look, I don't know whether, my camera's just not good enough to focus, but the, the slot there where the gib screw goes in, just, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know what they used to get that out, it just, they've had two goes at it. Um, gas acts or something I'm not really sure it's just uh, it's pretty horrendous so that'll need a bit of firework just to tidy that up in the bottom it doesn't matter because it's in the bottom it you know the, the the gib screw only bears on one surface to push the gib into the into the slot so it as long as that surface is flat it, it's okay but I, I just you know while I'm at it I'll tidy that up the other side um <laughs> it's had uh, the same treatment as the y-axis one, so it's been, I don't know, scraped with, well, I don't know what, um, it, it's horrendous really, um, there's big lumps missing out of it and it doesn't, it, the camera's just not picking it up, not showing it so well, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's in a pretty poor state. I've loosely set it on the surface table and I think there's probably about 50, 60 thou of out of flatness in it. Um, so what I'm going to do first before I start doing anything um, in terms of assessing flatness, I'm just going to give these this surface more than any um, a draw file just to get rid of the biggest lumps and bumps so that I've got at least got some flat surfaces to sit it on the surface table um, and then I'll, I'll do some filming at that point of in terms of fixing this and getting it to the same condition as the other one that I've done. So I'll bring you back at that point. Alright guys, so I've got the uh, the x-axis gib on the surface plate um, and basically if I look at the, the side that had been scraped with a I don't know what, chisel or something um, I've, that's now, I've done that side basically, I'm not going to do any more to that and I know that looks horrendous but those low spots will will hold oil and I need to be careful because they are so low that to take those out the gib script's just going to get too thin so it's a balance between getting it flat and straight and going too far with it and ending up in a mess because they're not evenly spread across the surface so to remove all of those marks I'm going to be taking uneven amounts of material off and it's just going to become a difficult difficult task so I'm not overly you know I'm not overly impressed with that but it's a flat surface and it is flat and I'm, I'm happy with it as it is in terms of flatness so that will go back in so I'll just show you that now so that's let me just give that a a clean make sure there's no muck on it and I'll just put that on the table and try not to trip over the tripod and um, I've done this in two two halves so if I go on this end first hopefully you can see this so I've just zeroed the, the clock out there and if I now try and move that end to end you can see there's a tiny bit of movement there it's about one division and each division on this clock is five tenths of a thou so over that length I've got about five tenths of a thou rock and I'm going to leave that at that I'm happy with that and going forward to backwards this way just trying to put pressure on 
there's no movement at all so in both directions now that's fairly flat and then the other thing that I've done is I've, like I say I've done it in two halves I'm not going over the where the key where the um, gib screw goes because that's quite rough up that end but again hopefully you can see this and my arm's not in the way zero the clock at that and then you know I'm pressing as hard as I can there and there's just no movement at all so I'm, I'm happy that that side's good I'll just show you the other side by comparison which I've still to do and obviously I'm sat on uh, I'm sat on the side that I've done so I'll just show you this side now this is the one that's been coarsely ground and all I've done there is taken a very very light draw file evenly right across its length just to take any high spots and lumps and bumps off so um, I'm going to sit down on that face now and uh, I'll show you what the difference is because I've not attacked that face yet so if I bring the DTI in and I'll sit it on an area that, that's had the draw filing work done to it and then I don't know if you saw that but there's 15,000 nearly of movement in there so that's that's really out of flat so what I was saying earlier it's obviously bowed this way so there's a high point somewhere down the length of here that's causing that rock and the way I've been finding that is if I move gradually move my finger up the bar now at that point there I've got no rock so I know that the high point is not anywhere on this side of my finger it's got to be to the right hand side so if you see there I've got a bit of rock come a bit to the left so where my finger is there that's the high point and that's where I'll go and draw file the other side put it back on check it again and, and it's just an iterative process like that so I'll, I'll do a bit of that um, and uh, I'll bring you back when we're, when we're somewhere near on the other side Right guys, I'm uh, just about done with this x-axis gib now. Um, it's uh, it's there or thereabouts, other than I've just got to clean it up. Um, just general deburr and derag, and I've got a bit of work to do on the on the slot at the end where the um, where the gib screw goes, um, which is just tidying up. There's nothing special about that. So um, that's taken quite a bit of effort, to be honest. Um, there's been quite a lot of uh, draw filing needed on that side to straighten that out and it's been mainly in this centre section um, that's where the majority of the works have to be done but uh, anyway it's 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 there or thereabouts now um, I'll just put it on the on here and give you a look zero the clock out and you can see there now hopefully there's uh, there's no movement in that at all so um, pleased with that so that's both sides of that done like I say I've just got a bit of work to do up at this end cosmetic really that, that bit's just needs a tidy um, and then something to do with this slot and then just a general deburr on all the corners just to tidy up and uh, and that'll be that one done so then all that remains then is to um, tidy up the um, oh incidentally I should have showed you my um, how I've been draw filing so that's the setup I've got I've just clamped a, a block to the to the bench and basically when I'm draw filing so I'm, I'm doing what I showed earlier, finding the high spot, marking it with a sharpie so I know where it is, bringing the, um, the gib up to the block, and then it's just literally you know, a draw file in motion on the right area, and it's just an iterative process backwards and forwards. So it's, it is like watching paint dry, to be honest. That's why I've not filmed a lot of it or any of it. Um, but we're, we're, we're good now, bit of clean up, 
and uh, and then the next job really is just to really set about these end bits and just to tidy up, make sure deburr, make sure they're good, um, clean the various bits and pieces up, and then the next job then is to focus in on the table itself and the y-axis carriage itself. They're, they're still as I stripped it and the base as well and get all of those cleaned up and uh, hopefully that'll be uh, that'll be it then all ready for rebuild other than waiting for the lifting gear to turn up so uh, I'll bring you back when I'm doing something a bit more interesting or once I've got those bits cleaned up just as an overview Hi guys well just a bit of an update um, I've, I've pretty much completed all the preparatory work now just waiting for the um, lifting gear to arrive so this is just a bit of an update of where we've got to so as I said previously the column axis is done uh, not to be revisited now I think we'll leave that as it is um, if you have a look at that that looks completely different from last time we saw it so that's all been completely cleaned up <clears throat> I've had a stone well initially a file over all the rough edges and taking all the sharp edges off and then a stone over the slideways taking the high spots off and the paint and everything else that needed to come off so that's all done I've taken the the lip off here where um, they'd, they'd filled it and it's not too bad actually it's chipped away a bit at the bottom but it's uh, it's come off fairly well as that so I'm pleased with that that, um, that sort of flange there has been flattened um, deburred and um, just generally tidied up uh, taps everywhere there's a threaded hole I've had the tap through it just to clean the holes out they're all good holes there's no rubbish holes they're just they're just full of dirt really so that's uh, that's all good so that's the base ready um, and what I shall do is I'm going to split the column from the base so those four nuts there I'm going to lift the column and the head off as one unit and if you think about that, I, I was worried that it would put undue stress on the on the on the joint. But if you think about it, it's no different. I think that the weight in that column is probably equal to the weight in the head and and the the bolt. The, sorry, the feed nut on the um, axis that's currently holding all the weight of the head will it will just be in reverse when I lift that. So as long as the centre of gravity is right, I think that'll be uh, good enough. What I'll do is pull the head all the way down to the bottom so that it's at its lowest point, try and keep all the mass together so that it's uh, easy to lift. So that's that. Um, in terms of the other two bits, so there's the x-axis and the sort of the carriage that, for the y-axis and that holds the x-axis, so they're all done, completely cleaned up, slideways stoned, every edge has had a file over it where there's an edge just to put a Sort of half mil chamfer on everywhere. Um, feed nuts all been cleaned up for the um, the X axis. That's had the same brush treatment with the Dremel. Um, so that's all. You know that that looks more like what I'd expect a brand new machine to look like. That's just been uh, just been built. So, and and again, I've done some checks on these as best I can, um, just with some straight edges and things like that. And and it's actually all in quite good condition. So. Um, I'm very hopeful that when it gets put back together, um, it's going to make a, a, a good machine. So um, so that's those two. And then all of the small parts now are complete. So you see the two gib strips there, um, the two um, feed um, bolt, um, lead screws, and then all of the end flanges and bearings and locks and everything else. Interestingly, um, at the end of the axis locks biting onto the back of the gib at least they have put ball bearings in because obviously you've got a uh, you're going through at a, you know you're going through at an angle you're not going through perpendicular so at least they've put ball bearings in the bottom so that's good um, so that's some of it that's the y-axis flange bearings and end piece and then at the back there you've got the two x-axis ones with the bearings again all cleaned up coat of oil on everything it's just it's just a coat of oil for um, protection purposes. When I come to reassembly, all of that will get wiped back off because obviously it's going to collect dust and whatever while I'm moving around in here. So everything will get wiped back down, re-oiled, apart from the lead screws, which will get greased. Um, what else I've done, apologies, is uh, 
where the it won't focus but where the oilers are on all three flanges I've taken the paint off I've scratched all the paint off the ball the little ball spring loaded ball that's in there and I've flushed those through so I've flushed all the paint and rubbish through so that it's all nice clean oil coming through there now so they're all done and, and basically all that oil does you've got a bearing in one end and a bearing in the other that are going to be greased and then all the oil does is provide a, a small piece of oil around the plain bearing where you've basically got the um, the diameter of the lead screw feeding through the plain bearing diameter of the uh, of this this unit here so that's all done so that's good I'm pleased with that um, it's now starting to look like a machine that um, I'm you know I think I'm, I'm fairly pleased with it like I say under all of the crap it's um, it's been fairly well made um, so uh, we won't know of course until we get it all built up but we'll see when we get to that point um, in other exciting news two parcels there have arrived so the one underneath with the blue handles is the um, static phase converter um, we'll do a, I'll probably do a separate episode on that and then the top package there is my slings that I've ordered for the uh, for the lifting so uh, so they're in quarantine at the minute so I'll just um, I'll just bring you back quickly um, and we'll wrap this episode up and uh, and then I'll the next episode will hopefully be the splitting of the of the mill and the starting of the reassembly well I've took the motor off guys I was going to um, I was going to just pop the top off and have a quick look um, while I got time while I was waiting for the lifting gear to arrive so I thought well if I take the motor off it's a bit less weight when I do come to lift it um, so it's probably five or six kilograms less on the on the you know weight but maybe a bit more so I've taken that off <clears throat> the wirings was in good condition actually in inside the motor um, but everything was tight and well put together so that's that um, what it has afforded me the opportunity to do and apologies I'll just spin you around so just bear with me a minute so you can see there where the motors come off and what is apparent there's there's basically six cap edge bolts holding this top piece on but there's also three looks like there's two here and one at the back jacking screw holes to jack this off so before I can take this off there's also sorry there's also two threaded dowels one there and one there so it's doweled on and screwed on I would imagine it's got I wouldn't think it's a gasket I would think they'd just use some sealant or something to seal the, the two things together so before I take that off I need to make sure I've got everything ready so two things I need to get myself or two or three things um, I need to get myself a slide hammer of some sort or make a slide hammer to remove these dowels because I think it's going to be easier taking it off if I remove the dowels first um, I also need to get myself some circlip pliers because I don't really have any to um, to take this circlip out here um, and then I need to buy myself some long uh, M8 cap heads to use as three jacking bolts to jack the head off and I also need to make sure I've got some new sealant um, so that I can seal it back together once I've had it apart so it's all good that I've seen all of that because I can get that ordered in at some point and have it ready so that as and when I've got it all built together I don't want to run this thing too long without having had a look in here if I'm honest based on what I've seen elsewhere so um, I might run it a small amount um, just because I, I think it'll you know it's not going to do too much damage just to test everything out um, and then I'll order the bits in that I need to uh, allow me to strip this down properly have a good look in there, drain the oil out, I need to order some more oil as well so that I can drain the oil, clean it all out, refill it with oil, re-put the top back on and seal it all back in properly and then I'll be satisfied at that point then that I've been all over the thing and given it a really good uh, a really good going over. So that's the sort of latest update.
Um, the only other thing I have done, and you can just see them at the back there, I've got my slings now, so the slings are uh, the slings are ready um, for lifting. They're, they're one meter long, so they're decent length slings. So um, I'm all ready to go now. I'm just waiting for my uh, um, engine hoist to turn up. I suppose I could lift this off with the crane. Um, now I've got everything, I could position it right under where the crane is, but it's going to be far easier to just wait till the engine hoist comes and at least I can move it around then once I've lifted it off, whereas the crane's in a fixed position, so I'm kind of stuck with where it is. It's going to be okay for lifting rotary tables, dividing heads, that kind of thing, up onto the mill um, table um, or anything big that I need to lift up, but uh, I don't think it's ideal for stripping the machine down so I'm just going to wait till the engine hoist comes now so um, so we're, we're, we're ready to go uh, guys here's my neighbours um, just thought I'd throw this in at the back of one of the episodes for you to see um, this one there that's just turned his back on us we call him Curly um, he's got uh, it's a different breed of sheep oh he's a top actually but uh, yeah I just thought I'd show you what we're uh, what we've got living next door to us, so all very peaceful. So there we go guys, um, it was kind of what I was expecting if I'm honest, um, even though it's uh, disappointing at times to see what, what we've seen, but uh, the good news is it's all scrubbed up quite nicely, um, so I'm happy with that. Um, I still have got major reservations over the, the head the gearbox in the head so that's going to be the next strip down I think um, but we'll get it all built but before we get into that um, so I've had a, a, some good feedback from uh, Phil C I think um, so there's going to be some changes upcoming on the channel shortly just in terms of the intro um, and Phil's not the only one I've had some other um, feedback as well even from Mrs John's workshop on, uh, on that so uh, I'm going to do something different with that just to try and shorten it and make it a bit more relevant. So, and then what I'm also going to do now, I'm getting to the point where um, I've got machinery that's and I'm ready to start doing proper projects such as the drawbar um, that I've already spoken about in this episode um, and various other ones. I'm going to try and make the episodes quite project specific um, just to just to keep them shorter, more focused. Um, and that's all been good feedback so thanks Phil for that um, it's all taken on board uh, you know constructive feedback from anybody's really really welcome I'm you know I'm new to this game so um, I'll try and uh, I'm never going to please all of the people all of the time but I'll try and uh, I'll try and get you know where I think something's a good suggestion I'll um, I'll take it on board so so we'll leave it at that so that's really the, the strip down and clean up um, and then the next episode so there's going to be a couple more episodes where we're bitting and bobbing about while we get the build done and stuff. But then once we're at that point, I'm really going to focus in on some on some sort of project work, um, which will be um, hopefully a lot better and a lot more interesting for you guys. So thanks for watching. Um, as always, um, much appreciated. I really appreciate the comments and the feedback that I'm getting. So thank you for that. Um, and. Uh, Thank you to the new subscribers um, that have come along. Um, it's, it's interesting that there seems to be a, an almost steady flow and every time I release a new video I, I pick up one or two, three more subscribers each time so that's all good. Um, so yeah, thanks for all of that and um, we'll catch you on the next episode.